In this video, we're going to talk about radical equations. A radical equation is an equation where the variables are under the radical. So I've given a couple of examples of radical equations. Now, for a greater than or equal to 0, the square root of a squared is a. And I can rewrite the square root of a as a to the 1 half. And when I take an exponent power to another power, I multiply. Half of 2 is 1, so that's a. I can make a similar argument with the cube root of a. That's a to the 1 third. And when I cube that, that's a. And then a similar argument here, a taken to the 1 divided by n power, taken to the nth, that is a also. So I'm going to use this idea to help me solve radical equations. All right, so let's take a look at the first example. All right, so I want to square both sides. Okay. So that's 5 minus 3x, and 5 squared is 25. Subtract the 5, and divide by negative 3. So now I want to check to see if negative 20 thirds is a solution to this equation. Notice the last line is 5 equal to 5. That means negative 20 thirds is a solution here. All right, so let's take a look at the next example. I want to get this square root by itself, so I need to get rid of the 8 and rid of the negative 5. So I'm going to subtract the 8. I'm going to divide by negative 5. And then I'm going to square both sides. So that's 2x minus 3, and that's 9. Add 3, and divide by 2. Okay. So let's check our answer. Notice the last line is negative 7 is equal to negative 7. That tells me x equal to 6 is a solution to this equation. Okay, so let's take a look at the next example then. So I'm going to start by subtracting 5. And then I'm going to divide by 3. I'm going to square both sides. Subtract the 5. And divide by 2. So now you need to check to see if x equal to negative 2 is a solution to this equation. So notice the last line, 8 is equal to 2. Well, that's a false statement, so I know x equal to negative 2 is not a solution. So here I have no solution. So why do I not have a solution here? Well, take a look at this second line. I have a square root equaling a negative number. Anytime I have a radical with an even index, it is never, ever going to be a negative number. All right, so let's take a look at the next example then. So again, I want to get the cube root by itself, so I'm going to subtract the 7 first. Divide by 3. I'm going to cube both sides. Add 1 and divide by 2. So let's check to see if this is the, a solution to this equation. All right, so notice the last line is negative 5 is equal to negative 5. That tells me that negative 63 over 2 is a solution to this equation. All right, so let's take a look at the next example then. So first off, I want to subtract the 1. Or square both sides. Now I'm going to take a binomial squared, so I'll do this on the side. And this gives me z squared minus 2z plus 1. Well, the left side is just z plus 5. This is a quadratic equation, 
So I want to set this equal to zero. So I'm going to bring the z over first. And now I'm going to bring the five over by subtracting it. All right, so now I want to find factors of negative four that add up to be negative three. Well, that's negative four and a positive one. So I'll write the previous step here also so you can see it. And so I set each factor equal to zero. So we've got four and negative one. Now, I want to check to see if one or both or none of these solutions work here. So let's check. Notice when I check z equal to four, my last line is four equal to four. That is a true statement. But when I plug in z equal to negative one, notice my last line is three equal to negative one. That is not a true statement. So I only have one solution here, and that's z equal to four. All right, one other example. Now, notice this example, two terms have radicals. So the idea is I still want to get one of the radicals by itself. So I'm going to move the square root of 2d plus 6 to the right-hand side. Square both sides. Now, on the left side, that's just d plus 4. But notice on the right-hand side, we are squaring a binomial. So let's do this work on the side. So foiling, we get 1 minus the square root of 2d plus 6 minus the square root of 2d plus 6 and then plus 2d plus 6. Remember the square root of 2d plus 6 times the square root of 2d plus 6 is 2d plus 6. Combine like terms and like radicals. So this, these three terms I'm going to put on the right-hand side. Now, I want to get this radical by itself. So I'm going to move this 7 over to the left-hand side first. And now I'm going to move this 2d to the left-hand side. Divide by a negative 1. And now I want to square both sides. So again, I'll do this work on the side. So notice when I take d plus 3 times d plus 3, I end up getting d squared plus 6d plus 9. And when I take 2 times the square root of 2d plus c and 6 and square it, I get 4 times 2d plus 6. I'm going to distribute the 4 to both of these terms and get AD plus 24. Put this in. Again, quadratic equation, I'm going to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to bring the 8D and then bring over the 24. factor, and then set each factor equal to zero. So now I want to check to see if either of these solutions are going to work. So notice when I check d equal to 5, I end up getting negative 1 is equal to negative 1 which is fine. So we know d equal to 5 is a solution. When I check negative 3, though, notice I get 1 equal to negative 1. That is not a solution. So again, I only have one solution, and that's d equal to 5. So when I take a look at these equations, you could have zero equations, one solution, or two solutions.